Hello everyone, Coach Carol here. Today I want to share with you a new editing tool that I found just by chance this week whilst getting ChatGPT4 to generate images. In this instance, I've asked it to create an image of portraits of ancestors in realistic photographic style. I asked for a 12 grid format, gave me many more than, than what I'd asked for, but that's okay for today. The change that I found was when I click on the image that's been generated, I find up here a new tool. Clicking into that tool allows me to use a select tool, which you can adjust the size of up here. And then I could ask for a change on a portion of this image. So let's take these first three guys here. And over here on the edit selection panel, add in my new instructions. So this time I want three female ancestors. Let's execute that and see how it can handle it. This will take a few minutes, so I'll pause here. In its first attempt to comply with my instructions, it managed to give me only one female image here on that middle row. So the next step I took was to edit it further and I highlighted all of this row here and asked it to replace with female images and the result was much better. Here it is underneath. The whole of that middle row now is entirely female ancestors. So all of those were put in place by simply asking it to replace. It can only do that from your selection. It doesn't understand how to read the image. So you have to highlight it, use the, the pen or the selector tool, and then run through all of the section that you want to change. Doesn't have to be exact. And write your instruction over here. So let's replace with images of children from ancestors in the same era. And once again, let it do its job. So I'll just pause here. And once again, success. The bottom row now consists of images of children. And if I want to download that, I can do so here by saving it. It would save it as a WebP file. And if I want to save it as a JPEG, I have to do that back here and ask it to save as a JPEG image. It will then create a Python code, which will instruct it on the process for converting the WebP file into a JPEG, and then gives me the ability to download the JPEG image here. A very useful way to then make use of that entire image. Now, the reason that I did that in grids was because I had learned from my first goes at this, that it would understand it would be easier for me to highlight certain areas of the image to make changes to. For example, let's go back to this one here, which I did for flowers. Following the same process, I asked for a grid of 
botanical images, which it did very nicely. And then I wanted it to change just this one. So having it in grids made it easier for me to highlight just that one grid, which I did, and ask it to replace it with another, which it did. Similarly, with this one for the, for the animals, I had several goes at this, having a bit of fun, but here is the end result of the grid of animals. Sometimes it doesn't give you the right response, so you just need to keep reiterating and asking the questions. So remember to do that. Click into the image that you've had it create. Highlight the area that you want it to change. and put your instructions over here on the right hand, edit selection page. And then let it do its work. Once again, I'll pause whilst it does its thinking and draws that new grid. Interestingly, it has replaced that last grid to giraffes, not an elephant. Not sure why, because over here it said that the collection has been refined to replace the giraffe with an elephant. Well, it hasn't. So you can get some very strange and unexpected results by doing this. I started by wanting to just generate a simple Easter card to celebrate Easter here in Australia. And I asked it to draw an image. And I'm just scrolling all the way back up to the top to find that original image in which we feature a bilby, which is an Australian animal, rather than a rabbit. And it did that really easily. Then I asked it to make some changes and add some Easter eggs like it is done here. And by further iteration, even more Easter eggs. So adding something to an image is fairly easy to do and much more successful than replacing the grid as I did before. So you might have some fun with this. So all you need to do is go to ChatGPT4 start a new chat with four and ask it to draw an image for you and then try out the edit. It might not be available for you yet, but wait for it. It should come to you soon. Hope you have some fun with that. Let me know how you get on. I'll be back with more later.